Welcome back. So we were talking about before the break, uh, the 10 year vulnerability on Intel system. Uh, so Intel is who manufacture your computers processor 99% of the time, unless you are one of those people who use AMD computer. Yeah. So they manufacture this I, Intel i7, i5, all those chips way before when, and they design not only the chip, the motherboard that runs that chip. Mm -hmm. So they have the North Bridge, South Bridge, all yeah. those chips that actually help the processor to run. Right. Uh, so in a large uh, enterprise environment, still in a Intel gives them options to manage those computers remotely. Right. For example, now I use a data center where it's in uh, Germany. Mm -hmm. I can even without operating system on that computer, I can actually reboot that computer. I can actually go into the BIOS. I can actually do a lot of things through the network without even, you know, getting anyone's help. I can right. even start an insulation through. So this is done. Uh, not only this, you can do a lot of things, you know, change bias settings, you can manage it, you know, you can do a lot of things. So how this is done is uh, Intel, within the Intel chipset, there's a processor mm -hmm. with a real time OS running. Right. So you call this the Intel AMT bug, but uh, if you look at it, what it does, it does so many things, right? So it, uh, it you call so it AMT. So all the control in your computer. Yeah. So this is come with Intel V Pro chipsets. Uh, so no one is hundred percent clear about it. Is this has been licensed to only handful of people by Intel? Right. So normal consumers like a personal computer is not affected by this. That we don't know yet. Right. So we don't know actually what computers are actually enabled. So they said it's only enabled in the VPro VPro computers, right? You might be having a laptop or a computer that actually has this yeah. without you knowing about it. Uh, so what happens is this gives someone the full control over the hardware, including the operating system. Mm -hmm. So which is really scary and no one knows about it because this is a closed source system. No one yeah. knows what exactly the bug is, right? So it's a proof of concept. Someone has proven it. It can be done. And Intel has actually acknowledged this is there for the last 10 years. Right. So if you are in the enterprise, if you are in, in, in the company infrastructure, so uh, the researchers recommend few things. Uh, putting an additional network card or bypassing the, then let's say if you take a server, you get two network ports, right? Mm -hmm. Bypassing the primary network port. So if you're going to the second report, this is not enabled. Right. And the biggest thing is still, it doesn't matter what software firewalls you run on the system, these services run despite whatever you do. Right. Unless you have another firewall right in front of that. Uh, again, no one is really sure whether this can be exploited with, only within the network or through the internet. So there are a lot of speculation going around. No one is really sure about what's going on. Intel is about to release a patch. But again, uh, how many people who actually update your bias, right? Yeah. So that's another thing. So you have to be, I mean, if you're in the enterprise, if you're really keen on this, uh, speak to your vendors and see how you could get this update across to them. So what currently people recommend is, so if you have a device, like I said, go switch to another different network interface because this is bind to the network interface, right? The primary yeah. network interface. Or from the internet, block these ports, right? So it runs on port 16992, 16993, 16994, 16995, 623, and 664. So if you firewall them out, no one can get in, right? So it has to be done outside the network, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say you install a firewall on your server and put a firewall in, this doesn't get affected because that firewall doesn't have any control over yeah. the system. So that's pretty scary. I mean, how so many? Moral of all these stories: calling to update your stuff, right? Your phone, your, even if you're on Linux, yes. you need to keep things updated. Yeah. So uh, apart from that, um, so there's another news going around because we are paranoid about these things. So uh, recently, few researchers found a lot of Android applications are ah, listening to. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, when I say listening to, it, it's not like they're trying to, you know, un, you know, talk, you know, listen to your gossip that you talk, talk about. But what they do is, let's say you're watching a TV show. Yeah. You see an ad, and what they do is, let's say this especially happens in US, but not in Sri Lanka, I think. 
So let's say you see an ad for a particular brand. Yeah. If you have for an app that affiliated with this brand, what they do is when they're playing that advertisement, they send an ultra ultrasonic sound. Yeah. And then they identify this. So till now this ultrasonic sound, what they do is uh, they pre-record it with the advertisement, right? All right. So let's say you're watching TV. I mean, obviously you're going to bound to have your phone around, right? So this application is keep on listening to what's going around mm-hmm. you. And when this application hear this specific ultrasonic frequency, yeah. it records that data. So they know exactly where you are yeah. based on your GPS location. Sure. And then they know you looked at that advertisement at this point in time. Mm-hmm. So they can actually map you to a lot of things. So they know what channel you're watching. Yeah. They know what time you're watching it and where you're watching it. Mm-hmm. So this kind of information really helps for marketing companies but sadly this is not ethical so in google terms and conditions they clearly say that if you're doing this you have to clearly mention that you're doing this yeah and a good thing about android is whatever said and done till now when you're installing an application it tells you what permission that application needs yeah for example let's say you're installing application that order food right mm-hmm. and if it's asking for your mic's permission i mean you can simply i mean common thing is why do you need my mic access yeah. right well, the thing is calling kind of with new i mean new technologies and everything there are so many ways to like interact with apps right yeah so you have voice search and everything it's very confusing for people to like actually finding out what the app is using and why the app is using these yeah. features so that's one of the reason why i like uh, cyanogen which i sadly know longer in place on my phone thing i can clearly say what access that application and even though if that application asks for it yeah i can say no don't give this access mm. don't give this access sometimes breaks that yeah but sometimes it might need those information so what i normally do is i don't allow it yeah but let's say you have a samsung device or something else you don't have this feature yeah. So Unless when you are installing an app you should actually uh, check what's what it's going to ask for right yeah you can even just ask. don't blindly say okay to this yeah but people do right yeah but read i mean it's simple it tells you everything it needs yeah uh, so i mean internet access is default asked by a lot of application but most of them don't need a lot of things for example your camera access uh you contact access which you have to really think about if an app is asking for your sms and contact app access you have to really think because if once you give that access they can do anything they want so this is scary uh, so now calling a tech companies are keen on developing things which are spying on you right basically yeah. so home assistants are the new thing yeah. everyone is making those uh <laughs> So basically it's there's a balance right i mean sometimes you might feel ah, i don't really care if they track me right yeah. sometimes so um i think we spoke about google a lot and they track you as well but the good thing about google is atilina let's say if you ha- if you're in, like in front of a computer just go to myactivity.google.com mm-hmm. and log in with your account yeah it will show you exactly what they're tracking mm-hmm. and you can switch them off as well let's say you don't want them to track a certain thing you can say no don't track me yeah but we these things is you don't know what they're tracking yeah and who they're tracking and who's getting that information yeah. all right that's pretty scary so i mean at least you know the party who are tracking you and if you know what they're taking out of you it's fine i mean then you know what you're sharing but when they do this without your consent it's not great right yeah. i mean come on obviously if an app is always listening through your mic the where the problem lies is still in if someone hacks into those systems yeah they can use your uh, you know phone as a listening device yeah it's going to be scary it's going to be scary so that's the sad story behind all this integration and all yeah. that so uh, you are safe as like as much as those systems are safe right yeah so it's not like even i have seen uh, so many ads on even our local uh, websites calling us saying you can track your uh friend so your spouse or anyone so these also get the informations right yeah so if someone hacks their systems what will happen yeah all the system is up yeah uh sadly we have lot to talk about sadly we ran out of time um thank you for joining us this week so if you have any question comments how we can get in touch with us it's quite simple 
arttechtalk at uh, takaslk.com. We don't track your information. <laughs> uh, so have a great week. See you next week.